Hi, I'm Carlene and welcome to my channel. Here you will find ways that you too can create a beautiful life on a budget. From my little corner in the world, I hope to inspire you to make over parts of your life and home that need some TLC. I enjoy creating videos around family, food, homemaking, DIY, travel, beauty and more. Before talking about the must haves for traveling with a family, I wanna take a step back and think about getting organized. Cause if you're watching this video, you're most likely the one that organizes everybody and packs for everybody. <laughs> well, it is in my case, that is what it's like for my family. So this is how I start. I start with getting shoes together. Look how cute these are. My baby was three months old when we went to Tasmania. So small. Um, I have a suitcase open already on the floor that's my starting point where I just start throwing in items of clothes initially and special items that we might be taking with us this was a family trip and this um, little teddy and all of these little um, knitted items uh, here were all handmade by my children's great-grandmother that little teddy I think is about 10 years old before she knew that um, I was only going to be having boys so it's covered in little purple flowers but that's okay um, so yes I wanted to take those back and have photos of her with the kids holding those things and wearing those things so sweet little memory for them anyway for this trip I needed to pack light so there's five of us and we only wanted to take two suitcases and it wasn't an extraordinary large suitcase either as you may notice uh, so I had to be smart with what I was packing so uh, when I pack for my children I like to not create capsule wardrobes because they'll wear whatever and it probably looks like a hot mess but they're happy because that's the things that they enjoy but I will put their outfits together and fold them together like this so that it is easy for them you know if I'm busy with the baby or hubby's getting them ready they can they know they just grab like a lump of clothes and it's going to be a matching set and a matching item so being a family of five, I wash almost every day. So I'm never gonna be completely caught up on washing in order to pack clothes, right? So it's easier for me to find little pockets of time where I can just, you know, the laundry's done, put the clean clothes there while I think of it, and then organize it when I've got more pockets of time. So it is unrealistic for me to think, today I'm gonna pack everything from A to Z. No, I sort of start early and organize cute little outfits <laughs> for my baby and start to think about what everybody is going to need. We traveled in March where we were expecting the weather to be between 16 to 21 degrees. But the first night that we got there, it ended up being uh, seven. So we weren't prepared. <laughs> we were not prepared. Um, so this is what our the wardrobe looks like for the boys. So um, I've got all of their outfits lumped together. So I had to pack short sleeves, shorts, long sleeves, long pajamas. I had to pack for all the seasons because it was an odd sort of time of year. So I wanted to make it really easy for the boys to just grab and go out of the suitcase so they also don't make a mess. Uh, my husband's um, wardrobe theme is going to be handsome lumberjack. Um, I went neutral for the baby so that way everything is interchangeable. We don't have to pack a lot. I had to pack swimming togs, would you believe? The place that we're staying at had an indoor heated pool. So I had to pack for all seasons, literally. Um, but the boys are done and then it's my turn. Uh, the kids are splashing the pool, being noisy, and then later on we're fighting inside. So voiceovers it is. Um, my wardrobe I like to throw out onto the bed so I can see exactly what I'm thinking of packing and to see if the colors are all going to suit each other as well and with layering as well. So, you know, you can't half tell that I like an animal print, <laughs> can you? Um, I just go ahead and hang all of this up so that way you can see how much you'd like to take and then what would actually be realistic. Here I'm laughing at these <laughs> maternity jeans. I'm thinking about that TikTok guy, like how are they gonna know? How are they gonna know? They're gonna know. How are they gonna know? Um, I did take them. I didn't do the YMCA as long as I didn't put my arms above my head. Nobody would know that I was wearing maternity jeans. Moving on, um, all of my tops had to be breastfeeding friendly. If you need some more breastfeeding clothes for the cooler season, um, I'll link a video that I just did um, recently. Um, another thing I like to do in getting organized is I like to just stick a box aside and put in practical things. I always, always take Dimadon 
not baby Panadol because it tastes rubbish. My kids fight over Dimadon. If one has a headache and the other one doesn't get to take it, like there's a fight on my hands. Um, and this you can adjust for a baby or such as this uh, or the big kids too. So one bottle will do my all of my children, which is handy. You know, you can put your medication in so you don't forget it. Just helps you be organized. I was taking breastfeeding um, supplements and vitamin C, knowing that we were going to go into the cooler weather. Uh, I was packing uh, prayer cards from the Daily Grace. I love these. Um, leading up to Lent at this time, we were trying to pray every day as a family. I just chucked it in a sandwich bag so they wouldn't get all dirty and grubby because we normally do it um, before we have our meal. Uh, and it has a date on each card and a little prayer to help... Um, you know, lead your family in prayer if you don't know what to pray for. Um, it's a nice little habit to do. So I'm taking those with us. I also like to take a night light, especially if the boys are going to be in a room separate to us. They might feel a bit unsure and they won't sleep well. So a night light saves any of those dramas. Travel calm for motion sickness. And I always pack a big garbage bag for laundry. <laughs> yes, life keeps on moving when you're on holidays and so does the laundry, um, just like normal. So I like to wash when I'm away so that when I get home, I don't have a huge massive amount of laundry I need to do and I just like to pack that so then we just dump all the clothes on the bathroom floor in our holiday place and then I wash them and keep organized that way. I like to pack a little candle so if I have some time to read a book or sit outside and have my morning coffee it just feels really peaceful because I don't get to do that at home normally it's a treat and I like to pack a face mask um, because breastfeeding will suck the life out of you the moisture out of everything and not just your milk makers but your face too <laughs> uh, and I like to pack something to read so if you like me and you want to use little pockets of time to get yourself organized, set aside a box and your suitcase and pack items leading up to your holiday as you remember them. Put them out of reach so that the kids don't accidentally grab anything out that you've put in because let's be honest, they'll probably forget to return it. Okay, so now that we are home, I wanna go through some things that I felt made the trip easier, traveling with three children, because we had a great time, it wasn't difficult, the kids traveled really well, and I think that these little things that I have that I organized made life a little bit easier for traveling. So let me share those with you. If you haven't met yet, this is my fur baby, Suki. Wherever you will find mummy, you will find Suki. So let me just go through my list that I've got down here to help me stay on track and I will go ahead and share those with you. All right, so the first thing is baby blankets. This might sound like obvious, but we decided to organize a porta cot with each location that we were staying at as opposed to bringing our own simply because of car space. So when we organized to fly to Tasmania, we organized a seven seater Outlander, Mitsubishi Outlander, and we didn't want to sacrifice any boot space knowing that we would have two large suitcases, a lightweight pram, and then, you know, thinking of packing a porta cot on top of that, you know, they're heavy they're bulky it'll probably break in transit just I just found it easier just to pay the money to have uh, each hotel supply us with a porta cot but I wanted to make sure that baby would be comfortable and not knowing what linens they would provide how much they would provide I wanted to bring what I would need so I had a lamb wool base that I used for his pram which I used for him to sleep on because they didn't provide like an extra comfy porta cot mattress it's just the base that wraps around you know how it kind of wraps around that rectangular shape it's hard it is not comfy and that's not how he sleeps at home so that could cause some problems right so I packed I don't know where it is I think it's in the car because I took it grocery shopping to sit in the little pram trolley thing but if you have a lamb's wool or a sheepskin something like that pack that in your suitcase it'll just lay flat you know after you pack all of your clothes it's not going to take up that much space but on top of that I packed three different types of blankets so I packed a muslin style blanket and that's because I would tie two corners into a knot to double this up as a uh, like a modesty cover so when I'm breastfeeding baby the world doesn't have to see what I'm doing so I'm covered and then I would also use this to um, 
pull my baby to sleep. So baby likes to uh, snuggle into my arm and I find that, you know, when you're traveling, it's like you're not doing anything, but you somehow get like grungy and sweaty and gross on the airplane. So I like to fold it over my shoulder like so and then have him nestled in the crook of my arm so that way he can breathe, we're not sweaty. You know, if you're on an airplane and you've got people on either side of you, I was lucky we organized to have me, baby, um, little brother, big brother on either side of me so that was fine and then dad had to sit on the aisle um, on the seat just across from the aisle from us. We found that worked easiest for us. So if something happens when you booked and you don't have someone that you know next to you and you've got a stranger, you don't want to have like a whole lot of thick blankets and that sort of encroaching in their space as well. So I found that really easy to sort of make that comfortable to cushion my arm uh, on the airplane as well as having him nestled in here and then not be sweaty and gross. I also packed, so three different types of blankets. I packed like a stretchy jersey style blanket so then I could double the this up as a um, like a change mat if I needed to. My nappy bag has a mat in it but sometimes things happen it gets dirty and then I've got nothing else to use so you can double that up for something like that or knowing that it was going to be cooler weather where we were heading in Tasmania I would need an extra layer. And then I packed a polar fleece. So I took those on the airplane and then I packed a polar fleece. I put this in the backpack actually for one of the other kids because uh, one of my kids is a cold frog like me. I knew that he would get cold on the airplane. So they're the different types of blankets that I packed. And that also doubled up as a pillow for one of them on the plane, but it's not as bulky as a travel pillow or a neck pillow. So I found that helpful to make sure that everybody was comfortable on the plane to have a rest. Normally everyone's excited and ready to go. So, you know, you might not get a good night's sleep the night before. So I found that really helpful. I can't find my dummy clip, but if you have a dummy clip, attach that so that you can attach it to your clothes, for example, or just on your baby's outfit so that if he spits the dummy out or she spits the dummy out, it's not gonna end up on the floor. Then you have to like push the button like, air hostess, I need some hot water to sterilize my dummy, thank you. No, it can just be <laughs> attached to you and then you don't need to worry about that at all. Um, my baby loves to sleep with the dummy in, so we're just gonna, you know, keep the same comforts as home to make sleeping patterns a lot easier. You don't want to change any of that while you're traveling because that will just induce a nightmare, a sleep deprived nightmare, I feel. What's next? A light pram. So we didn't pack our nice big pram for our trip. My mum, who likes, I like to joke that she likes to hoard everything, but thank you for keeping that pram for like nine years and I didn't think I needed any more. Um, so we packed a lightweight pram, like a stroller pram but I was planning on even purchasing one on Facebook marketplace as soon as we got there just to make that easy in terms of not having to bring it with us but we flied with Virgin and they made it super easy we kept that with us the whole time and they just tagged that so then we could uh, walk the baby stroll the baby right onto the tarmac right to the plane they would take it at the base of the stairs and then I would have my baby carrier ready to go and then I would just sit him in that and then make my way up to the airplane because hubby would have backpack nappy bag and then I would have baby and then two kids one in each hand so then we were all you know um is that a nursery rhyme dance so we'd all be you know holding hands on the way down the airplane so that people wouldn't you know push in between us or push past us so that's the next thing on my list is a baby carrier I preferred to pack a structured carrier this was gifted to me by my sister-in-law thank you uh, this is a uh, baby Bjorn highly recommend this style because it has the support around your hips this is really feral dirty because my baby's just eating solids now and there's food and baby cereal all over it but you get the gist um, pack a clean one whatever you want to do um, so it has like a hip support so that just helps to support the baby's weight around you and it doesn't kill your back because I've had the one that crosses over your back and then clips on the side and it digs into your ribs and it just hurts so um, I find I found a structured carrier a lot easier than for example something like this could you imagine trying to like get this on top of you like oh uh, on the plane like help and then you've got you've still got someone to hold your baby and then you've got their two kids and your husband and too hard basket right too hard so pack a structured carrier it'll make your life a lot easier I even attached the um, dummy clip to that as well now that I think about it okay next thing on the list is pocket toys my boys um, know what pocket toys are because that's what they take to church so it's not a new concept to them back in my day they'd be poly pockets but they're boys 
Uh, so, so Hot Wheels or something like this is perfect size for them to take. They can put it in their pocket. They can carry it. It's not like, mom, can you carry this? Mom, where can I put my huge toy? It's in their pocket. It's ready to go so that they can be fidgeting in their pocket if they're feeling you know, impatient for traveling or they want to play while they're on the plane or while they're waiting for the plane. I just find that a godsend because boys move around. If you've read Steve Biddulph's book, raising boys they learn from their environment moving their bodies they're never just going to sit still it's not in their nature let's just accept that give them something to help them cope and move on with the day what have I got next on the list so snacks of course and water bottles so I feel like that's an obvious one but don't pack snacks that are like your mini like chip packet in like the cryovac bag because they go with the pressure can I make that noise again with the pressure and you don't want people to think that there's been a gunshot on the airplane so just avoid something like that something that the packet can breathe is a lot easier and for water bottles it might sound like something so obvious but the type of water bottle I feel makes a difference I drink a lot of water I'm breastfeeding you've seen my pink cup that I carry everywhere I brought that and my children drink a lot of water as well so I couldn't f I think they've taken theirs to school today but this is hubby's just as an example it's a Nike one they're not cheap they're like this one's even more expensive but the smaller one for the kids size at 20 bucks a pop but I honestly just got sick of buying cheaper water bottles that weren't even lasting that long and they drop them once it's broken whatever um, but these if you can listen to this they love doing this in my face ready so because of the pressurized little um, bit of silicone in there when you're on an airplane and the cabin pressurizes it slowly will like release the air out of it where and it doesn't leak in your luggage whereas something like this water bottle that has a straw in it the pressure from the cabin will force the water up the straw and um, it will like drip out onto the floor I and mean, you can crack a seal on it whatever like you can make do with it but I just didn't want to deal with that this time because that happened to me last time so I let my lesson that's why I'm telling you now so I just find this sort of water bottle easier to pack like it won't leak on the plane but then it won't upright leak either what else have I got? Jumpers. So on the plane, it gets cold. You know, we're from tropical Queensland. It, I think we left at like oh, 34 degrees or something and we got there, it was 16 and windy. Uh, so if you pack a jumper, you can tie it around the hips and then they can also double that up as a pillow. So one of my kids had this, the other kid had their pillow sort of leaning on the little tray to have a rest on. So jumpers can double up as pillows. It's less for you to pack and they can carry it themselves wrapped around their hips as well. So it's not like you feel like the ultimate pack horse. Now dealing specifically with baby, I breastfeed so I fed him on uh, departure and on landing as well. So when it got to the point that the airplane was speeding up on the tarmac, I'd pop him on and as soon as they give me the warning like we are about to descend, I would pop him on again and that way it helps while he's sucking and drinking that it helps the pressure in their ears so he does not feel uh, any pain or gets a headache or feels that pressure you know through your, your, your nasal passages in your head that you can get. This was um, Ollie's first flight so he did experience that. I tried to give him uh, you know, a minty and some water to sip on to kind of chew and move his jaw to help him with that but it was a bit of a bumpy ride on the way in so him and I both felt a little bit off and a bit ill and seedy after that so I don't know if that could have been avoided the other two boys were fine as in my husband and my eldest son <laughs> So feeding definitely makes a difference. I did hear other babies and toddlers on the plane that were sort of crying and that high pitched like, Wah! like they were in pain at landing and takeoff. And I could see their mums were trying to, you know, put the bottle in and giving them snacks and things like that. So it doesn't work just for babies, but for older children as well. Which leads me to my next tip is pack nipple balm or nipple cream because you will be feeding more often. We had two flights on the way down we had three connecting flights on the way back up it was like Whoa. so I packed a nipple balm this is an Australian made Australian owned uh, company these are handmade and this was gifted to me from a friend who is studying to be a naturopath so it's called blissful herbs and it is a balm so it didn't leak on the airplane 
and make mess. So I highly recommend something like that to take with you because your nipples will probably feel like they're on fire after feeding so many times in one day. There's probably not even any milk left to be honest because he was sucking me dry. So that's my next tip is to have a little bag like this ready in your nappy bag to make traveling a little bit more comfortable. So I've got my nipple balm. So I have a natural hand sanitizer as well. That's another thing that is in my bag because you are not always gonna have access to clean water and a, and a hand washing sink for the kids to eat on the go because I don't wanna pick up any germs from the airport or the playground that we're at or wherever we are. So this is a natural antibacterial hand gel. Smells a little bit funky, a bit like I don't know, herby or something like that. Um, so the kids don't love the smell, but it doesn't burn their fingers and it didn't burn my fingers. I get dermatitis or eczema on my fingers. I've got it now and it's very painful. So um, I found that helpful to pack. And then just put your medications in here that are ready to go, even like your Panadol, ibuprofen, things like that, so that it's ready to go in your nappy bag. Uh, some Band-Aids, cotton buds, tweezers, splinters, things like that, that you might have somewhere at home but you know on the go you might not have those things so just like some basic first aid sort of stuff so have that prepared in your nappy bag so it's ready to reach so i feel like the airport is a judge free zone in the sense that people crack a beer at 9 a.m that's fine having a cocktail at 7 a.m okay uh also you're never gonna see those people again so if you feel like your kids are playing up they're a bit rowdy they're a bit noisy who cares you're never gonna see those people again anyway do what you need to do to look after your family to make sure that you're having a good time to you know get through to the next flight to get through to the next place because it's gonna feel like a nightmare if you're constantly stressing like shh don't be so noisy you have to sit still no they don't it's okay I mean I'm not encouraging you to have your kids screaming and yelling and squealing through the airport because that's kind of like uncomfortable for everybody but I mean, my boys will have their pocket toys. They'll be, you know, driving them underneath the chairs. And if it's empty and there's, you know, the little lineup where people can queue and things like that and they want to play around, like around there, I'm going to let them because they need to burn off some steam, burn off some energy. Because if they're not going to do it there, they're going to be locked into a small little airplane seat. And that's where the nightmare is going to increase, right? So when you're in a layover or a stopover, you know, take them for a walk through the shop just to have a look and get them to move their bodies and, you know, get their little pocket toys out and just let them play. If you've got colouring in books, great. I didn't have a The other thing that I want to mention is to just watch yourself check yourself right so if you're feeling stressed if you're feeling anxious you're feeling pissed off or anything like that the kids are going to sense it you know your partner's going to sense it and it makes traveling not fun so let's just roll with the punches the ultimate lesson of learning to be flexible and just go with the flow i mean you don't want to miss your flight right so make sure you give yourself plenty of time in advance to get to places because if you're going to leave it to the last minute you betcha someone's going to poop or someone's going to have a nappy explosion something like that okay so don't leave it down to the wire know exactly where you're going and what time you need to be there but while you're there try and relax and try and make the most of it and try and have fun because this is a new experience for your kids you might have flown a million times before but to them everything can be new and overwhelming there's lots of noise it's very noisy there's lots of people so just sort of try and soak that in and try and find that silver lining in those moments also noting that you want to look after your partner as well so that everybody is having a good time and that you can put each other first in that way so there was one point where the boys were just hammering my husband dad 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 and I was just sitting there feeling a little bit nauseous from that first flight and I thought you know what Dan I'm like there's a bar go and get a beer go and sit by yourself go and get a magazine crack open a beer and just relax and I sat over near the the terminal where we were waiting for our flight to come in in saying that two minutes later the baby had to poop and I had to get the two older boys to join their father but on the other side of like the fence of where like the barricade is of like this is where you're allowed to drink this is where you're not allowed to drink so my kids were over here watching the planes come in but they were fine they were safe they were happy daddy was happy so you know work together to try and make the best of the situation and try and make sure everybody's having a good time and for you before you leave for your trip I want you to think about what is your bucket list for your holiday so this is one tip to make sure that you have a great holiday is what makes a wonderful holiday for you and your family like for me I like to light a candle and read a book I like to do a face mask I like to have 
a moment in time where it's just me. I can just relax, breathe, it's quiet. I enjoy some quiet time. So there's some things that I enjoy that refill my cup before I can pour that cup out to fill my children's cup or my husband's cup. Like they say on the airplane, put your mask on first before putting the mask on your children, right? Make sure you and your partner have a full cup and then you can fill your children's cup as well. Now I think that's everything that I did on our first trip with three children, my baby of three months, my five-year-old and my eight-year-old, just to make flying and traveling that little bit easier, that little bit more comfortable. Because let's face it, when you're traveling and when you're on holiday, it's still daily life. A little bit more fun, but there's still going to be, you know, the tantrums or the laundry or the sleep deprivation or anything like that. So it's just that you're not going to have the conveniences of home. It's almost a little bit inconvenient because you won't have everything, but make the most of it. As long as you're there, your family's there, your kids are there, everything else is replaceable. If you forget something, you can just go and buy it. So, you know, don't stress, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, I think that's all the tips that I can think of for now that we did to try and make traveling with kids that little bit easier. If you want to stick around, I will share with some clips with you from our trip uh, as a vlog sort of style to Tasmania with the highlight being Grindelwald. We loved it up there. So if you haven't been to Grindelwald before, it is a Swiss village at the top of the mountain in the Tamar Valley in Tasmania. There are wild bunnies running around, ducks, geese. It's very picturesque. It's very storybook, fairy tale inspired. So yes, highly recommend staying there or visiting there because it has a whole village. It's not just an accommodation. There's lots of little places to uh, visit as well.